Well, I think uh, boys and girls clubs are fantastic organizations and I've uh, been fortunate to work with several. Um, we have funded the Boys and Girls Club in Salem and Corvallis several times and a few others. So I've got to go visit with them and really learn about that model. And I guess the first thing to say is I think there are several things about Boys and Girls Club that we have in common with their approach. So our, our tribal education or recreation programs uh, do provide a safe and positive place for kids to be after school and in the summer. And uh, we have uh, professional mentors or assistants that help kids get their homework done, help them participate in healthy activities, and, you know, identify as part of this tribal community. I would say those are the things we have in common with that model. Uh, some of the things, though, that I think tribal members are seeing as really attractive is Boys and Girls Club provide a very broad array of activities for kids to participate in. And it's really very much a year-round program. Something to think about, however, is, you know, that is a nonprofit model. We would have to form a nonprofit here in Grand Ronde with its own board of directors. That can certainly be done, but typically those are funded by philanthropic dollars to a large extent. And we don't have the kind of large population in Grand Ronde uh, that they do in, in Salem or Corvallis, so that there might be some challenges of scale. At the bottom of all this, though, I think what they provide that we we are moving towards but I think we could help move even more in that direction is what they would ki uh, call skilled or trained mentors so we have fantastic people in the education program working with our youth and in the recreation program but uh, Oregon mentors uh, has done studies and they would tell us that people adults who are trained to work with kids who are at risk of not graduating from high school trained to deal with the kind of problems these kids may be experiencing at home or at school can greatly improve uh, the kind of support they provide to kids and greatly increase the likelihood those kids are going to graduate from high school. So I would like to build upon our existing strong education services but provide our staff uh, with much more focused training on how to best serve our kids. Uh, and then we can talk about the scale of programs and if there's some things that we could add to, to our current programs. Now that being said, if there are folks who want to establish a board and really try to recruit a Boys and Girls Club Center here, it can certainly be done. It was done in Warm Springs and I'd be happy to work with those people to, to see what we could do. Well, you're right. That is certainly, there's been a lot of discussion about this on social media. And uh, personally, I have no problem with exploring this as a financial opportunity for the tribe. Now, that being said, I've also talked to some of our elders who are not as enthusiastic about the idea. And um, you know, they are concerned about you know, the, po the potential that the tribe would be seen as promoting uh, the use of marijuana if we got into the business. So I think this is a perfect example uh, of a great opportunity to use an advisory vote. I think advisory votes are a tool that we should use more often. Uh, I think it's good to use them if we were going to have a new and major expenditure of resources, the kind that we hadn't contemplated in the past, or a new policy position that really changes the tribe's policy position on something. I think this would be a perfect example to find out from the membership, you know, would you be in favor? of our tribe investing in the developing uh, marijuana business in Oregon. I reached out to a friend of mine who is actually a, an expert. He's working in this developing business in Oregon. He's a legal representation of several companies who are producing and selling marijuana commercially. And he thought that there are still good opportunities uh, for new investors in the field, but he also encouraged us to look at him. He let me know that I guess hemp are the male plants of the cannabis plant. Uh, they don't have any intoxicating effects, but that hemp fiber is being found to be tremendously valuable um, in clothing and materials industry, but also construction materials. Apparently they can make a product uh, that is several times stronger than concrete. And uh, the demand for this is expected to go up substantially in the next few years. So I think a great way to proceed would be to, to hear those tribal members who are saying we really should be looking into this as a business opportunity and 
to move forward with an advisory vote, and if the membership is supportive, to explore these opportunities, potentially for marijuana, but especially for the hemp industry. It sounds like that's really um, the place where our investment could go a long way. Well, I think this is a critical time for us in terms of uh, our sources of funding to support our tribe and our tribal programs. Uh, we are now going to see the opening of the Cowlitz Casino um, before too long. And I think it's, it's really unfortunate that at this point in time, when we really need to be focused on diversifying our economy, um, we don't have an economic development program right now that's functioning. I think we, you know, we should have been answering this question, you know, two years ago, and really developing other investments. But here we are today, and we have to move forward in the best way we can. We, we will see, hopefully, before too long, we'll hear from council kind of what they're thinking about in terms of plans for the old Multnomah dog track. Uh, with that being said, we need to prepare in the next couple of years for some potential substantial decreases in our revenue. So we need to look at our tribal budget, and we need to look at those uh, line items that are not grant supported, those that would be affected by decreased revenues. And we need to start planning now to evaluate what would we have to cut. What if, we had, what if revenues were reduced by 25%? The best time to do that planning is now, before we have to actually make any cuts or deal with that. That gives us plenty of time to discuss what we would do, and plenty of time to think about how could we perhaps rearrange our organization to minimize impact on tribal member services. And that being said, I do think we need to rebuild our economic development department, and I think we need to do it also developing a board of advisors. We need to recruit some of the best business minds in Oregon to advise our tribal council. The tribal council will always remain the final decision maker. Oh, wink. Yeah, that sounds like wink. <laughs> um, well, uh, first, I think I, think I have to uh, uh, wonder about your definition. I, you, you claim that it, that it has to be meat and other condiments between two slices of bread. Now, is that being too close-minded? I mean, a hot dog bun uh, is a two-sided piece of bread, uh, even if it is connected. So, uh, wink, I, I don't know if that's wink's definition. But I think we have to be rather open-minded when we're thinking about sandwiches. And I, I would say, yeah, some sort of a well, hot dog is what, a meat product? Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Surrounded by bread. I, I think that, that, should, that should meet the definition of a sandwich. Okay. So a pig in a blanket would be a sandwich as well? Mm -hmm. Good question. Blanket. We'll just end right there. <laughs>